Hello, are we all here? Jazz hands if you can hear me. <laughs> Hi, look, I got dressed up for you today. Didn't brush the hair though, because at this stage, there is no point. How are you all? All right? Your lockdown hair, kind of, um, you're looking good. You're looking good. So, don't worry, you're not going to have to look at me for long, because I'm going to be dropping in pictures and paintings as I talk about them like this and today we shall be talking about Starry Night because I don't feel like I've talked about it enough recently. <laughs> um, so let's start off with the basics. Starry Night was painted by Vincent van Gogh. I have to be so careful how I pronounce that because the Dutch get very upset. I've had a few comments. Um, if you're nervous about how you pronounce Van Gogh, the key to the pronunciation is actually in his paintings. If we have a look at them, they're all signed Vincent. Now this is actually because he was upset by how many people mispronounced his surname. So there we go. If you're unsure about what to call him, just call him Vincent. Or as one Dutch woman barked at me, it's Vincent. So you can't win, just call him Vincent. Um. Starry Night was painted in 1889. Does anybody know where he was? You can't talk to me. Can you show me through the um, actions of mime where Vincent was in 1889? <laughs> no, I shouldn't have asked it. Um, Vincent was in the asylum in 1889. Now, how did he get to the asylum? Well, we all know that Vincent had his problems, right? And... During a particularly nasty psychotic episode, um, he cut his ear off. We all know that, right? It's like the most famous episode in art history, along with Picasso's micro penis, right? Do we know that? Okay, that's next week's lesson. It explains everything. So Vincent cut his ear off. Now, you know, he lived in a small town in the south of France, and he was a bit of an outsider. He... Um, was an artist, he was Dutch, so he had a different accent from everyone else, and he was prone to some odd behaviour. So, um, so I have to keep remembering to look at the camera, not at you lot. Um, and he, he was prone to some odd behaviours. So people were a bit wary of him, but it was okay until he cut his ear off, and then people got, you know, a bit scared of him and stuff. And it was a reason, instead of trying to understand his mental illness, he became completely ostracised for it. When he returned home to the Yellow House... After being in hospital, nearly dying from the loss of blood, of cutting his ear off, a few men in the town began to gather outside his house and jeering him and goading him. And understandably, this upset Vincent so much that it put him back into hospital. And it was then that he voluntarily admitted himself to an asylum. And here's the asylum here. Vincent wasn't a high-risk patient here and he did have a certain amount of freedom and he painted every day when he was well enough so he would paint inside he would also paint in the courtyard and it had lovely gardens there there's lots of canvases that he painted within the grounds of the asylum and also they gave him the freedom to go out into the surrounding countryside and here he painted loads of beautiful paintings now he was in the asylum for a over just over a year and in that time he painted about 100 canvases now perhaps the most famous well, he did a few famous pieces while he was there but perhaps the most famous was starry night so this is the view from his room in the asylum he painted quite a lot of canvases of the view but this is the only nighttime view now he didn't paint it at night he observed the night sky from his window and then he painted this during the day from his memory and imagination and this was generally unusual for Vincent because he tended to paint what was in front of him so he would go out into the open air and paint a landscape or indeed he would paint a vase of sunflowers or a portrait of someone sitting in front of him and sometimes in the asylum when he wasn't well enough to go outside or somebody didn't want to sit for him he had a collection of um prints from magazines and and he used to paint his own stylized versions 
of the black and white prints. But with Starry Night, it's painted entirely from memory. And I think because of that, it just gives us a special opportunity to look further into the mind of this artistic genius. Well, here's something surprising about Starry Night. Um, Vincent didn't like it. He considered it a failed study in abstraction. He thought this was a failure and his brother Theo, who was an art dealer, tended to agree with him. He said that Vincent had placed style over the composition and the substance. And actually what's interesting as we go into the future with Vincent, so after Vincent and his brother died and his brother's wife, Jo Bonga, who's a very important person in Vincent's history and we'll talk about her another time, but it, she almost single-handedly pushed and promoted Vincent's work in the 10 years that he died. Um, and it was her really that brought him to a wider global stage. Were it not for her input, I wonder whether Vincent would be the world's best loved artist. But um, I think she's often forgotten about. And so we'll, we'll talk about her at another time. But even when she had his collection of work and she was pushing the paintings out to exhibitions and to collectors, Starry Night was right on the bottom of the pile. Nobody really wanted it. In fact, in 1907, she sold it to an art dealer for 80 quid, who in turn sold it to a woman who had it hung on her conservatory wall for 30 years. Isn't that just astonishing? I, I actually think if I could go back and be any person in history, I think that um, if you want Elvis Presley, you know, I want to be the woman who had Starry Night on her conservatory wall for 30 years. That blows my mind. And then, of course, it ended up, I think, with another dealer. And then it ended up in MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York in the 1930s or 40s, where it's stayed to this day. And that's when it truly started taking off, you know. And um, that's when the, it was called Starry Night. I think before that, it wasn't even called Starry Night. It was called, um, Vincent called it Starry Sky or Night Study. And he didn't really pay much mind to it, you know, because he just, he didn't rate it. And um, and now, of course, when you go to MoMA to see it, you can't get near it. People love it. But back in the day, it was not considered a big deal at all. So how did Starry Night become considered a masterpiece if it was so readily disregarded in its first couple of decades of existence? Was it the popularity of the public that turned the tide of opinion? I mean, it's a very instantly appealing painting, isn't it? With the colour and the light and we can marvel at the motion. But I think there's distinctly more going on here. And of course, it's hard for us now, knowing Vincent's legacy, to just stand in front of one of his canvases and just look at the painting. I don't think we truly do that now. When we look at one of his paintings, our thoughts and feelings of the man himself are projected onto it. So we're not just looking at the artwork, we're looking at the legend. But I actually think there's something else going on here. When we first look at the painting, perhaps we notice this central turbulence. Now, turbulence is an interesting phenomenon. It occurs a lot in nature. If we think of the surf rolling in at the edge of the ocean or smoke billowing from a fire. You know, physicists have a hard time precisely nailing what turbulence is. It isn't straightforward. It isn't like gravity. What goes up must come down. I'm, I'm simplifying here. But... um. If gravity is what goes up must come down, turbulence is what goes around, goes around, goes around, goes around, goes around. It's kind of a law unto itself. There was a Russian mathematician in the last century, Kolmogorov. Did I pronounce that right, Netherlands? <laughs> Kolmogorov, who kind of, his equation is kind of considered the closest we're going to get. But people as scientists are still researching it to this day. In fact... Um, I love this. A, a few years ago, the Hubble telescope was flown up to a galaxy far, far away. And they, um, the scientists observed turbulence. They observed the dust and matter swirling around the stars. And do you know what they said when they saw that? When the scientists are sat looking through the Hubble telescope, watching this swirling turbulence 
you would think they would say, hmm, this is um, reminiscent of the Kolmogorov equation of turbulence. No, they sat there and they said, oh, look, it looks just like Van Gogh. I love that. It, I love that the world's most intelligent brains are watching something in a galaxy far, far away. And their first reaction is, oh, wow, it looks like a Vincent painting. Love that so much. Because of this, other scientists did experiments, experiments, research on Vincent's paintings. They took Starry Night. They took a digitised picture of it and they scanned it and they logged all of the places where the variance of luminance occurred. Now, luminance is the light. It's the variations of the light next to each other. If I show you on a close up. So luminance is where the proximity of a bright bit next to the proximity of a dull bit next to where something is in between. They pixelated the whole thing and run it through a program. And guess what they discovered? They discovered that Starry Night matched Kolmogorov's equation of turbulence. It wasn't just similar to it, it matched it. Now, you kind of could think, okay, that's a fluke, that's coincidence. With all the paintings there are in the world, eventually one of them is going to match the equation for turbulence. Well, they actually scanned some of other Vincent's paintings, the crows alighting on the wheat field, and the one with cypresses, whose title I have forgotten at this moment in time, but this one. And when they run these through the same program, they also matched the equation for turbulence. Now, as a measure, as a control, they scanned another painting by Vincent, this self-portrait of him with his bandaged ear, which has smoke on, which don't forget turbulence exists in smoke. Absolutely no match to the equation in this painting. Now, further investigation has shown that the three paintings that matched the equation were painted at times where Vincent had psychological agitation. His self-portrait with the bandaged ear. We know that when he painted this, because it's in a letter to his brother, that he felt level-headed because he was medicated with bromide. So it's safe to conclude by the results of this scientific study that somehow Vincent, during periods of mental unrest, managed to convey the scientific equation of turbulence exactly onto a canvas numerous times. <sighs> How? By the way, the um, PDF of the original scientific study of these experiments, uh, I'll, I'll link them underneath this video. Read them. Um, they are not as difficult to understand as you might think, and it's actually quite short. So um, read them. So uh, what do we make of this? How, how could that actually possibly have happened? I mean, it happened. I mean, that the obvious explanation for this is that we're all living in a simulation, right? I am becoming more and more open to simulation theory by the day. The world is just getting increasingly bonkers. Um, and also, simulation theory goes a long way to explain why Leonardo da Vinci invented Google Maps technology at the turn of the 16th century. Equally mind-blowing. Haven't got time to do that today, so um, that's coming up. So how can we explain, really, how this happened? I mean, what's interesting is that you can't, physicists can't even fully explain turbulence. So maybe we can't fully explain this. I've really thought about this a lot. And these are my thoughts. I'd love to know what you think. Leave comments and stuff. Maybe we'll get to the bottom of it together. But I think I'm heading in the right direction when... I say that Vincent was highly attuned to nature. You know, we know that he was emotional, sensitive, empathetic. He was a highly perceptive man. And also he spent a lot of time in nature, you know. Nature was his muse. 
And I also think in a way that we perhaps can't understand living in the way that we do today in the 21st century. I mean, we're surrounded by man-made structures. We're suffocated by technology. If you're a, a farmer or live remotely, you're obviously closer to nature than most of us. But I think if you lived 150 years ago in rural France, you could be at one with nature. You have an affinity with it. I, I'm not saying that we can't go out for a walk in nature for a couple of hours and be in love with nature and be appreciative of nature. I just don't think, I think few of us these days are actually attuned to nature in the way that Vincent was. I mean, you just need to look at his paintings. Half of them are um, landscapes that he has stood in the open air and paint. I mean, there are accounts of him of standing in raging storms with the rain washing off the paint quicker than he could put it on. He really was connected to nature and I think perhaps observing it from a different perspective of which we observe it now. I mean, Starry Night, he was sat in his room in the asylum looking out and observing the night sky. And also, let's not forget that 150 years ago in rural France, there's no light interference. There's no um, street lights and car lights. I mean, that sky would have been amazing. It would have lit the whole countryside up. Now, here's something that I've kind of just sprung up in my mind the last couple of days. The moon in starry night. Now, Vincent's in an asylum. For want of a better word, back in the day, he would have been called a lunatic. It's a lunatic asylum. The word lunatic comes from moon. It literally means moonstruck or madness from the moon. In fact, Aristotle, way back when, noted that the full moon has a intense effect on people suffering from epilepsy or bipolar, two things that Vincent has been retrospectively diagnosed with. But here's the thing. If this is the case, the moon in Starry Night isn't a full moon. Or is it? It's painted as a crescent moon, even though the energy coming off it is circular, which kind of does put in mind an interpretation of a full moon and don't forget this is an impression of a night sky this isn't exactly what Vincent saw this is from his imagination so maybe you know it would make more sense with the pull of the moon and if Vincent was truly affected by nature and just so keyed into it that he could replicate turbulence if that was truly a full moon now this is a brilliant brilliant book you all need to go out and buy it um there's a link down below but um if you like starry night and vincent it really is beautiful it's just so much information in here but here's a really interesting bit of information right here so this man, Vincent historian Martin Bailey, he's brilliant. This isn't the only book he's done. He's great. So wanting to find out as much as he can, researching Starry Night as much as possible, um, he goes to the Greenwich Observatory. Now at the Greenwich Observatory, they can recreate the night sky from any day in history, from any vantage point in the world. And they recreated the night of the 14th to 15th of June, 1889, which, as we know, these are the two days that Vincent painted Starry Night. And this is what came up. First came the rising moon, almost full and far from being the crescent in the painting. Interesting, huh? So even though we have a crescent moon in the, what appears to be a crescent moon in the painting, in real life, when Vincent is looking out over those two nights at the night sky, there is a full moon. Did that full moon have an effect on him? 
So could this be the key that Vincent was influenced by the moon? A man who is highly responsive of nature, who is part of nature. Could it be that looking out, being mesmerized by the night sky, that somehow the next day it enabled him to transmit precisely the equation of natural turbulence onto the canvas. I don't know. I don't know. Help me out here. This is your homework. Um, <laughs> figure out how this is possible because, gosh, it's extraordinary, isn't it? Absolutely extraordinary. And I, I, I love that, though. That's what makes this painting just so much more why it makes it so fascinating, why it truly deserves its iconic status as one of the world's most famous and most loved masterpieces. There's just so much more to learn about it, but also ultimately, you know, we're never going to really know, are we? So it just kind of holds this mystery for us all as well. I love Starry Night so, so much. Um, we got to go. Time's up and I don't want to keep you any longer. By the way, it's a shame because I want to get on to Vincent in lockdown. You know, he, he he's going through what we're going through now. Although obviously, <laughs> hopefully we have nice places to be locked down. But um, look, I won't keep you. But, you know, fight, do play, play video games, Twitch, TikTok, binge, Tiger King. We all need to do those things. But look. Great stuff can happen when um, we have a bit of time on our hands and we're, we're stuck inside or wandering outside on our own. Two metres distance. Thank you very much. Um, jazz hands, let me know you're still all awake. Great. All right. Um, so just, you know, this isn't a formal work or anything, but let me know what you think. Have a think about it. Come back to me and um, we'll do something next week i think i've got something interesting about the scream so maybe do a bit of background reading about that but don't worry don't worry if you don't have time it's cool just look after your mental health and happy lockdown okay goodbye <laughs>